told me. Two miles from Beale Street? Hardly seems fitting. Here, operator, Boston, the Mercantile National Bank. Mr. Lattimore, three. Make sure it's three, okay, honey? Number two, he don't talk to me. No. I don't seem to be communicating with you. Wrong way, Corrigan, I presume. I don't suppose I could find the words to convince you I've got to catch that girl. I don't suppose there's an emotional corner inside you somewhere that would resonate with the sound of two hearts calling out to each other? Obviously, you don't know our leader. 110 and low, what are you gonna do when she shifts into second? Now, what you should do is radio ahead and tell the boys to retrieve her before the sonic boom hits town. It says here you were born in Rye, New York. That makes you American, right? Yeah. So how come you don't speak the language? Her name is Vicky, and she went that way on a motorcycle. Now, don't tell me you didn't see her. Okay. Out. Out? You're gonna walk some straight lines, you hope, and blow up some balloons. Hands behind your head. Small steps, go ahead, start walking. between your voice and number two. What's that, Mr. Lattimore? Memphis. Yeah, yeah, we just pulled in. She almost shook me east of Vicksburg. Caught one of them ferry boats before I could get aboard. But I caught up to her again on the straightaway. A nobody but nobody shakes Fogo Popkin. Right, Mr. Lattimore? Eh, maybe it's the Boston accent. You think that's why I have trouble telling the difference between your voice and... What, Mr. Lattimore? Is she going to see him? Well, she promised she'd at least take a look at him, didn't she? And one thing I'll say for her, she keeps her word. If you can ever figure out what it is she's saying. Uh-oh. She's turning off. Call you back. <laughs> Did anyone bring the Pacific to Balboa? Oh, but the cotton exchange strictly for men. No girls allowed. 
The joint will go up in smoke if you walk in. If two strangers are ever let the walls between them tumble down, let themselves stand face to face, it's got to happen where it happens, how it happens, whether on the head of a pin or in a cotton exchange. What am I doing here? If I had any sense, I'd call a broker and sell cotton futures. She's gonna cause more havoc in there than a cloud of bull weevils. What I'm about to say is in the interest of my public image. I am a southern gentleman, miss. We are all southern gentlemen. We are soft-spoken, hospitable, and we thank the good Lord for stealing our ribs and sending us back ladies as lovely as you. But this is the uh, Memphis Cotton Exchange, and we are trying to conduct business as usual in an environment free of ladies. Now, if I may, please. Hello, Vicky. I have never seen you before. I do not know you. How could you if I don't? But why should we strap ourselves in place when there are so many things to be? Not only animals, but plants and minerals. I've already been most everything at least twice around. It's not easy. The changes are so abrupt you scarcely have time to adapt. If you're a gazelle, you graze. But then suppose you're an anaconda and have to squeeze. It's totally different. The transitions can be terribly tiring. The temptation is not to change. Rest of voice tells you. Settle it and says, surrender it pleads. But being everything. Isn't that what living is? Oh, Mr. Frank Breidenbaugh, I hope you're not stuck someplace. Because stuck people are dead. And then you and I, we'd have no hope for each other. One time I turned into a porpoise and raced to catch halfway to Honolulu before I became the wind in the spinnaker. That's not so difficult, turning from a porpoise into wind. But you just try some time changing from wind into sodium phosphate. Even though I've been sodium phosphate seven times, I still find myself acting more like nitric acid. How about cotton? Have you ever been cotton? That's vegetable cellulose, isn't it? Yes, I've been caught. Huh? Well, then you know how we tell when you're fully matured. Well, when you're cotton, I mean. You pull me apart, and if I make a crisp little sound, I have the right degree of spirality? I sing. Oh, yes. I've been cotton. <laughs> I don't know about you, Harry, but me, I'm gonna get out of my cotton. I may even go short. In fact, I may sell May wheat. They're coming out now, Mr. Lattimore. Why do you spell it F-R-A-N-C-K? What's the C for? C is for cotton. Dad was a romantic. She looks happy. Brad and bound like Cupid dropped a bridge on her. You blame him? I guess he never figured the Mercantile Bank of Boston would ever send him a dividend like Vicky. You know what love is? Frank with a C. 
Well, I used to know today was Wednesday, but don't ask me to bet on it now. Yes, sir, it's going great. I figure another day or so I can wrap up and head home. You know, I haven't seen my youngest yet. He's... What? No, Mr. Lattimore, I'm not hinting for more money. Come on already. How many private eyes make 250 clams a day plus expenses? The taxes are killing me. If I can pick cotton, the sodium phosphate, and the wind, why can't I be love? Have I come too early? Maybe I'm still an event on its way. Am I too soon, Frank? Or too late? You are Vicky, and I am Frank with a C. Let's take it from there. You see, the trouble is the bank sent me a financial statement and not a photograph. <laughs> Did you see their faces in there? General Sherman on horseback with a troop of Connecticut cavalry couldn't have caused more consternation than you did. That was great, just great. I wish I'd thought of it. <laughs> Listen, I have a place in the country. Mother has moved in just dying to play the southern hostess for you. She brought Matilda with her. Matilda's been with us since I was a pup. We set the whole east wing of the house aside for your visit. Cook is roasting and frying and broiling and basting all for you. There are fatted calves everywhere. But I liked you so much better when you were falling free. Now you're safe with Cook, Matilda, and Mother. Uh-oh. She's getting on that bike of hers. Call you back. Hello, Frank. I appreciate you coming over here, Mr. Martindale. I would have came to your office, but she keeps me on the run. But I just checked with the chief, and he's alerting the highway patrol and the county sheriff. The bank's worked out a foolproof procedure. Since she refuses to carry any identifying papers or even a license plate, I carry everything in the cruise. As soon as we hit a town, I always check in with the police. Then step two, we always retain the best attorney. They say in Memphis, that's you. Well, I wouldn't go that far. There's your retainer and a letter of instructions, what the bank likes. And uh, Mr. Lattimore sleeps better is to know we got the best legal brains available on a round-the-clock standby as long as she's in the town. Uh, there's security in there for bail bond uh, it's in case. But what does she do? She's herself. In most places, that's enough to get her locked up for 10 years. Look, if anything breaks, and it will, I'll be in touch.
wallet, okay? I haven't seen my wife in months except for the picture I carry. What have you done with her? Left her in Brooklyn. What else? You think she could take this kind of life with seven kids? Don't give me that double talk. Who was the other guy, your go-between? How much ransom are you asking? Oh, you hear this, Amy? I gotta have this aggravation, too. If you've so much as laid a hand on her... Ah. Ooh. Ah. Yeah. Mr. Popkin? Yeah. Lattimore here. We just sent you the additional funds. Now, see here, old man, that's it. Is that clear? Not another penny till this is done. Yeah. We're counting on you to deliver the body. Have you got her inside this thing? You tell me who you're looking for, maybe I can get my arm back. Oh, this is the dress Buzz bought her in Tucson. Oh, you're the other guy she met in Tucson? Shut up. How did you know? She always wanted to go back and find you, but, and I'm quoting, time is a sponge, a very wet sponge, and it wipes away all the long roads back, unquote. Hey, pal, about my arm, huh? Yeah, Pogo! such a bad kid, Amy. Now, you heard it just then. The gentleman's agreement in effect. And she never breaks her word. As long as the GAs on both of us can have a little freedom now and then. You know, just a sniff. And she won't try to get away. What's good for a busted arm, Amy? fallen free. So we will fall together. I've dreamed of it. Where are you going? You don't need a parachute in your dreams, but where we're going, it'll help. In there. I told her to keep Matilda, keep cooked, and I gave all the help a two-week vacation with pay. For the past six months, I kept saying, Mr. Lattimore, what possible interest could I have in meeting Mr. Frank Breidenbaugh <laughs> and a hundred of his million dollars? Well, your Mr. Lattimore has his counterpart right down here in Memphis, Mr. Larkin of the Cotton Bank. He kept insisting I meet you and all 30 of your millions. <laughs> Imagine that two banks acting as marriage brokers. Why did 
that you finally agree to come and take a look. Can we go high? Really high? I'll tell Johnny to hit the ceiling. tradition. He does all kinds of impulsive and undisciplined things. Mr. Lattimore doesn't understand. He thinks I live the way I do because I'm impulsive and undisciplined too. Well, we're about ready. He finally reached me though. More by accident than by design, something he said. In a desperate moment of appeal to what he considers the woman in me. To refuse love, he said. It's the same as turning one's back on life. So, here I am. Well, follow me. Ladies first. All right. No fear? Not even a little? Of what? Oh, I don't know. Me, maybe. my life. Do the things I do. That way we'll know, won't we? I know already. <laughs> How long will you be staying? The centipede was happy quite, until the frog for fun said, which foot comes after which? Which wrought his mind to such a pitch, he lay distracted in the ditch, considering how to run. You park the cruiser and you bring the bags upstairs? Yes, sir. Yeah. Right up. Your arm. My 
my old man was a lizard, I'd grow a new one. I'm uh, sorry. I got a little emotional. Mrs. Puck. How do you do, Mrs. Popkin? I'm Todd Stiles. I'm sorry I got the wrong scam on your husband, but well, Vicky and I, we go way back, and I'm a little confused. Who are you? Mrs. Popkin and the kids call me Pogo, the provider. Lattimore 3 calls me troubleshooter. Vicky calls me a broom. You got an entry? Drop it in the box. Okay, Pogo. Where is she? Look, don't confuse her, especially now. How could anybody confuse Vicky? Look, she's a little sentimental about you and the whole Tucson caper. Let her get married in peace so we can all settle down. Sorry, kid. Who's the guy? Go ahead, Amy. You tell him. I can't. She love him? Amy? Okay, Pogo, provider, troubleshooter, broom, think. I'm gonna camp on your doorstep. I'm gonna haunt you the same way you haunt Vicky, because I know you wouldn't be so relaxed unless you were sure she was coming back. So I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait right outside. I'll wait. Nice meeting you, Mrs. Popkin. <laughs> they stayed so long. I thought there'd be an epidemic of rage and headaches by this time. They're just rolling on curiosity. I wonder if our son isn't out over his depth. If you can swim in the shallow, Emily, you can swim in the deep. John, please talk to me and stop turning those phrases. You know how I hate that. What I'm trying to tell you is I think she's too good for him. an elephant in the dark, Mr. Breidenbaugh, how would you describe him? Oh, well, I must confess, my dear, we haven't had that experience. Uh, if you touched his trunk, you might say this animal's like a water pipe. If you touched his ear, you might say he's like a fan. If you touched his leg, you might say he's like a pillar. Frank and I are still touching in the dark. Would you excuse me, please? Oh, yes, of course. Ask a silly question, huh? I need a drink. What girl marries 
years for money. She's clever enough before marrying a millionaire to fall in love with him. Did she really come here on a motorcycle? Oh, Miss Russell, do you really travel on a motorcycle? It starts out that way, but after a while when it's wide open, you just sit there and the country's traveling under you. What do you do about calluses? Ignore those girls, Miss Russell. Lincoln freed most everyone except them. Who are you? Can you see him clearly when you can't see yourself? Can you know his needs when you don't know your own?
15 minutes. That is, once he got out of jail. What's happening, Bogo? At Frank's party, everywhere I looked, I saw masks. Masks on everybody. In all their mannered poses, I saw my own self-deceit. For a moment, I had the terrible feeling that Howling board's no different than my own. Pogo, what if it's true? There's a myth about a man named Baladin, the eternal wanderer, who disguises life's mediocrity with glorious lying fantasies. How frightful it would be to discover that I'm like Baladin. What must I give this man, Pogo? Only the bright side of the moon? Mayn't I give him sorrow as well as joy? Dullness with wit? Ignorance with knowledge? All that is unborn and unlovely inside is me as well as that which is alive. Or are we simply melons to be sliced with only the ripe of us suitable for serving? He said, under the smile was something very simple. Is that jealous and he lost his head? He only asked for one more chance. Don't you suppose I want that too? Don't you think I want to find somebody somewhere? To whom I can say, I love you. I love you. I love you. anybody be considered a vagrant who saved $3,300. Well, how do we know you didn't swipe that passbook? Well, Mr. Popkin, thanks for coming over. I've been trying to get you all night. Will you please tell these officers that I'm not a vagrant, that I am what I represent myself to be, Todd Stiles, clean living, law abiding, a, a good friend of Miss Vicki Russell, and definitely known to both you and the First Mercantile Bank of Boston? I never saw him before. Uh, thank you, Mr. Popkin. Uh, we'll take it from here. Well, wait a minute. Look, uh, I never did get a chance to make that one call that every criminal is allowed. I mean, you fellas got a hold of Pogo Popkin, not me. Now I demand my constitutional call. I demand to be connected with Mr. Buzz Murdoch, Mercy Hospital, Cleveland, Ohio. Now, Mr. Murdoch will vouch for me. He'll go my bail even from his bed of pain. 
You got echo viruses are ringing in the ears. Okay, fellas? Why not? Echo virus, huh? Yeah. Very good. All right, let's put it up another notch. Too stunning. You know, it occurs to me, John, that in all the years of our marriage, you've gotten by with 29 words of vocabulary. Nonsense. Well, 30. Now, let me see. We have to ask the whole Manning clan. What's a wedding without Harriet Manning? Far more enjoyable. Yeah, but they did ask us to pull Mabel's engagement. But stunning. She's best and frank. Oh, dear. Any of you gonna drink out of stirrup cups, you're gonna bring your own stirrups. Well, the rest of us conservatives, there are highball glasses inside for one and all. Vicky, ride with me over to the tack house. Imagine the kids we could have had. Remember that first day at the Cotton Exchange? I made what you tallied a slip. I talked about security and tradition and authority, all the things you're running away from. And last night again, I showed up badly in your book. I was a poor sport. And why? Because I was jealous. A natural thing for a man who cares for a woman. And just now I found out that I can't jump a horse as high as you can. I didn't like it. All any man wants, all I want is a woman who is not a contender for the title. I just want to come home once in a while and let down. Relax. Well, what it means is I love you, but no thank you.
That's too bad, Lattimore Three. What you don't figure is she's more than a stock portfolio, some kind of blue chip. Who says she's missing a good bet? Frank Bridenbaugh? Huh. Can't even twist. Girl like Vicky. Missing anything. Did Josephine miss TV? You and me, Lattimore Three. And two and one. We should all be so alive. How do I know where she's going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got her in my front sights. Relax. Film presentation, Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.